In this video, I will address the topic of synthetic biology and the ethical issues surrounding it. The name may be confusing to some. It encapsulates the combination of biology and engineering, which together unite to form what is known as synthetic biology. Scientists use knowledge of genetics and the natural constituents of genetic information found in cells DNA, to create new forms of genetic information that are not naturally occurring. This requires a somewhat materialistic view of an organism which can be constructed and designed. What separates synthetic biology from genetic engineering is that rather than altering an already existent gene and modifying genomes, Synthetic biology puts these blocks together from scratch to build an entirely new strand of DNA which is then placed into an empty living cell. Technological advancements in this field are being pushed forward by the increase in ease and fast speed of the process along with lowering of procedural costs. Some essential tools in this area include DNA sequencing, modelling of synthetic genes, and measuring their behaviour. So what can synthetic biology be used for? One use is the creation of biosensors to detect contaminants in the environment and then remove these with specially constructed plants or microorganisms. In medicine, diagnostic tools can be developed to reduce time in the identification of ailments. There is also current research into the production of new pharmaceutical drugs and vaccines. Findings may also be applied to a variety of industries such as the assembly of biofuels and chemical technology could also be impacted creating chemicals for cosmetics to materials to cleaning products. But with these hopes some ethical concerns emerge one of which being the accidental release of synthetically created organisms into the environment. These organisms would function normally, growing, reproducing and evolving. But their behaviour and their effect on ecosystems is unknown and could be damaging. To prevent this, measures are put in place to halt the engineered bacteria surviving outside the sheltered confines of a laboratory. This is achieved by creating bacteria dependent on nutrients with limited availability and so are not equipped to survive without them in the wild. Another prevention is that when population density rises too high then a self-destruct mechanism is triggered. Yet another problem is the threat of bioterrorism a form of biological warfare in which new pathogenic viruses and toxins may be produced to deliberately harm humans. This problem relates to the access to synthetic biology procedures and information. Online catalogues of synthetic biological components such as biobricks allow starter kits to be distributed and bought giving people a chance to try out their own constructions. Some kind of control is required to ensure safety, such as regulating commercial and public trade, so that it cannot be potentially misused. The risks of bioterrorism must be considered at events such as bioweapons conventions to ensure safety through the determination of security policies. The third and final issue I shall address is a philosophical and religious question. Are hu scientists playing God? Some people may dispute if scientists should have the ability to create artificial life. However, others may argue that humans have strived to mould and shape our surroundings in the cultivation of crops to the breeding of farm animals to be bigger and more productive. Our lifestyles are also modified, prolonging lifespan by improving health through sanitation and medicine. Therefore, this discipline could just be an extension of this pursuit. In conclusion, to gain a full perspective on synthetic biology, the topic should be dis discussed and issues confronted. 
for this public knowledge and accessible information on the subject is key to understanding and deciding the future of synthetic biology.